In one of my last videos, uh, Kevin Criswell had sent over a video demonstrating the newer version of the Craig Foreman because I had mentioned that um, there was a good deal on it and that I had the older version and that I highly recommended it, but I couldn't uh, swear by the durability of the new one, even though I thought the design was much superior. And then Kevin uh, took the time to make the video and send it over and I shared it with you guys. Well, in that video, you can see the cradle that he um, designed that not only holds his table saw, but holds his uh, Craig Foreman flush with the workbench. And then also uh, another tool fits down in there. Well, there was enough interest in this cradle that uh, Kevin sent over the design and I'm going to share that with you in this video. Hi, I'm Ron Polk, designer of the Smart Wood Shop and a series of Polk workbenches. If you want to get yourself a set of any of those plans, you can click on the link in the description of this video down below or you can uh, wait to the end of the video and click on it and go right to it. And also I want to remind you that the Craig Foreman has that $75 mail-in rebate and it is good until the end of the month. So we got about, what, a week or so to go. And so if you want to grab that, again, um, I highly recommend the design and the efficiency. I just love the tool. I'd replace mine immediately if it failed. Um, I just find it to be an incredibly productive, valuable tool. And now that we know that this much uh, less expensive version performs uh, even better than my older, more expensive one, that uh, you know, it, it, it's even a better value. I'll also provide a link for that in the description down below. So this is the design that Kevin emailed to me. And so get ready to take a screen grab here uh, no, I will not be forwarding these emails uh, or coming up with plans for it. This is Kevin's design. He's freely sharing it here, and I think there's enough information. So just again, just do a screen grab. You can see he's using the pipe supports from the um, Polk Total Station and has sized the width of it so that it will drop in between. On the top, uh, he has set it up so that that's where the Craig Foreman fits. So because the pipes were at a predetermined uh, location as far as height from the top of the bench, the drop from there is completely adjustable uh, for his needs and your needs. Where he ran into a little difficulty is the top of the pipe is a fixed location and so he just measured from there to the top of the bench and it just so happened that five eighths of an inch material was perfect for the foreman to sit on. So you, 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 might, you might need to think about that, uh, the thickness of that material um, and what tools. And of course, you, if you had even shorter tools, you could put spacers on top of that and lift the tool up further. So a lot of flexibility here. And then what he's done is he's got different tools that fit in here and he's just created these spacer blocks uh, to um, set in this location here. Uh, so he's got a sander, a drill press, a blum mini press, and they will all work in this cradle just by putting these different spacers. And he, um, uh, spacer block for assistant tools, rubber or sandpaper surface. So he's just doing a sticky surface on top so he's not having to bolt the tools down. Here's a reward for those of you who have stuck around and watched this video. Kevin has sent us another design that I'm going to share with you now. I'm not going to mention this in the title or to the description. So this is just for those that watch the whole video. Kevin created what he is calling the poor man's tiger stop. In another video, you saw me interview uh, the folks over at the uh, AWFS 2019 Woodworker Show and their amazing uh, productive uh, tool to uh, digitally measure and, and set the stop for a production uh, miter saw cutting. And this one that Kevin designed doesn't move this, the stop in position for you automatically like the Tiger Stop, but it does give you that digital accuracy. And he did it with a simple Bosch 
uh, laser tape measure, and these are not that expensive. They've got they've come uh, down in price, and there's lots of brands. And so what he's done is he has taken the Paul Toll Station. He's utilizing the um, where the standard stop goes. He's even used the same flip up uh, design, but he's looks like he's taken this out of maybe a two by four. And he's uh, designed it so that he's got the knob that will move it back and forth and a place that he can fix his uh, digital tape measure in. And what's cool about this is uh, this could be mounted with a, with a piece of Velcro. There's, there's no um, need to have this in a, you know, set up so that um, you, you can't pull it out. And, you know, you're going to need to pull it out to change the battery anyway. So you could pull it out and use it for its normal uses and then stick it here. And here's what's really cool about this is that he doesn't have to calibrate it. I mean, once it's set up and he knows that reading from this point to the side of the saw uh, is set up with this. And he's done that by f just pre-calculating, you know, where the back of the tape bumps in and the laser shoots out of there. Once you set that up once, all you got to do is stick this back in its... Uh, proper location whatever it reads is going to be the distance and so if we um, kind of go through these photos he sent us here you can see that um, it this uh, laser dot when he pushes the button he's put a little block on the saw here and what and, and it tells him so he just moves this until he gets the um, length of cut he wants and then um, Here's another shot of it just looking down to show you the number that he set. And then here's his actual cut from that. So I'd say that's pretty doggone accurate. And then here's a close-up of just the block he put on his miter saw. And so this is what the uh, digital tape uh, reads off of. So there's just that initial calculation of, you know, um, reading from here is actually telling him where it's going to cut. So, you know, a little bit of, a little bit of, figuring that out once but one and done so interesting and i love it and i like that uh, there are so many smart woodworkers out there if you've got any great ideas like this that you'd like to share then you can let me know send me a little video or some an email with photos and i will try to do the same thing if i have time i love sharing this stuff i love the great ideas out there Thanks again, Kevin, for sharing this. Hey, if you enjoy uh, following along with the Smart Wood Shop and seeing other people's shops and ideas, be sure to give me a thumbs up, subscribe, and remember to ring the bell so you know when I drop a new video. Hey, thanks for stopping into the Smart Wood Shop on the road. Have a great day.